So today I would like to demonstrate a script that I wrote for the church that I go to, Substance Church. Um, we created this script uh, in order to make it so that we didn't have to manually enter in an entire magazine full of data. Uh, we did a three or four times a year magazine that had a listing for all of the subgroups at our church. Um, and there was a certain amount of information that went with each of them. Um, they used to do it by hand, but many times the data would get off um, you know, you can do merges, but then it's really hard to run them repeatedly and there are limitations to what you can do within the merge. So what I ended up doing was writing an Apple script. You can write um, InDesign scripts in other languages as well. I chose Apple script because it was something that was quick and accessible for me. Um, this is written for InDesign CS3. I'm sure you could actually adapt it to work with newer versions of CS, um, but this is what I had at the time and I wanted to make sure to document this before it uh, too much time and pass. So another thing that I created, which is not being covered here, is a uh, Google form. Uh, actually had kind of a decision tree in it. The result of that form was this sheet here, which has all of the information that I need to import, separated into some succinct rows. So it's not terribly uh, a lot of information. Another thing that I did it was it insert these special uh, tags for icons that I wanted to throw in that associated uh, with the topics for the different um, subgroups. I've uh, scrubbed this sheet here so that uh, no one's seeing anybody's personal information and this is the one we'll be using for our import process. Um, so the basics here is I have a block of what each one of the entries is going to look like. I have the um, column letter and then I have the XX where the different rows will be imported. I also have this hidden field uh, or this hidden uh, display text box. This just helped me um, debug things. So if there was an issue and it said row two, I could actually go back to the uh, Excel document and see what was, if it was wrong in the original uh, information on row two. Um, I wrote uh, three scripts for this. This is the primary script that runs most everything else. Um, I also have a populate icon script, which um, is um, actually we'll take it, find and replace and add these icons at the left here and substitute them for these items up at the top. Um, I also have um, an, a couple of other small scripts that do some cleanup. Um, did it in multiple scripts just to help separate concerns um, and to make it easier to call functions. Um, I think you could have done it all in one actual script document. It, it would make no difference. Um, the key for a lot of this is these scripting labels. You select a specific text box area in this uh, little table that I have in here. You'll see that there's a script label for each of these content blocks. Um, this is how I find, or how the script finds each one of these content blocks um, and adds the information that it needs. So with that, I think we'll run the script. So the first thing it'll do is it'll ask me what file I want to reference. So I'm going to pick my sample file. And then it's going to ask me how many rows to import. And I'm going to say uh, keep, keep a relatively small number. Um, so rows 2 through 14 to import just so that it doesn't run forever. So what it's doing here is it's actually copying and uh, this content block and then using that content block to repeatedly paste in. Um, input the specific information. As it's replacing each of the text items, it's actually updating the uh, script label so that it knows it's been touched and I don't have to worry about coming back and hitting it by mistake again later. Uh, once it finishes putting in all the text, it's actually going to ask me if I want to populate the icons. That was just so that I could um, exit out if I was just running um, through to see if there were any specific issues. So here's the populate icons thing. We're going to say yes. I'm gonna go ahead and populate icons. It's basically going through the text, which you can't see here, but actually doing a find and replace on each of the specific items, um, a specific, I don't know, text strings that we used. Um, I actually have that sample box that you're seeing pop up in the upper left, which is basically just a way to make sure that, okay, everything that was possibly populated did run through. I didn't miss any or skip any. Uh, the result is this um, here, and I'll, let me turn off the wires. And uh, as you can see, because my styles are set up, it flows properly from one page to the next. Each of the content blocks stays together. 
Um, you can see all the information is in properly, all of the icons are in, um, and it, it looks really, really great. Uh, the one caveat uh, I will mention is it was very important for me to turn the um, real-time screen rendering off as part of um, running the script, otherwise it takes forever because it's trying to render each box um, this way it was just able to run. I basically took a process that was about two weeks of time and put it down to something that at the end when there were, you know, almost a thousand records, it ran in about 25 minutes max. So very, very helpful that way. Um, however, I did also create it to be um, pretty flexible. And let me show you how here. I'm just going to close this document. Um, a little, one of the last magazines we did, they had asked us to create a new template. And I was actually fairly easily able to basically take what I had. You can see we've got um, different rows. It's a different size magazine. Um, you know, it's definitely thinner. We've got this um, vertical row going in here. And I was able to basically go through and um, create this um, fairly quickly, actually. Um, I had to update, you know, make sure everything had the right script label and whatnot. But once that was all complete, um, you know, you can see like a lot of these are different sizes. It's almost completely different. Um, however, if I go in and run the script again, works the same way. Choose our document and I'll go. Uh, we'll go six, make it really quick here. And you can see that it's actually working exactly the same. So, you know, someone could take my original template frame and as long as they make sure that they link everything together and their original block, all of the uh, text labels are proper, um, you can very easily, um, easily reconfigure it to a different um, configuration or different layout. There you go. Um, here, let me turn this off. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, the way that it's finding the strings to replace on the icons uh, is also variable. If you look at the script labels on each of the icons at the left, this is actually why I have these here. You can see that it's telling me that it's one of the logos that it's going to look for, and then it's telling me what string it needs to find and replace. So, um, you know, you could create any number of logos as long as they were all on the page like this and they had a similar scripting label scheme, um, it would run. Like I said, this is up here just for me so that I can see that all of the strings were replaced properly. That's it. Um, if you have any interest in this, uh, feel free to post a comment. Um, would love to uh, share out my work if somebody's interested in taking it forward or adapting it to a uh, more modern version of CS. Um, I don't take a whole lot of pride in the quality of the coding, but it does function fairly well. So.